Today we're taking a look at my best Annapolis game I've had so far. This ship is ridiculously powerful. And in this game, we are going to maximize its potential. We even have Halsey Confederate in this one, just to give you a little heads up. We're starting a little ways in though, since the early game was pretty boring. We all know how super ship games go, especially with carriers in them. It's pretty passive. Uh, so we were just farming some battleships at long range from behind this island here, and that was really all it came down to. However, this game is about to get spicy quick. The enemy team is going to push in and essentially murder our entire team. This island here is perfect for Annapolis. The ship loves to farm battleships and use island cover next to cap zones to radar caps. We just have a ton of battle impact. That's really what it comes down to with Annapolis. One of the reasons I love it so much is just the immense battle impact you have with one of the best radars out there and just a ridiculous amount of DPM. The ship is also surprisingly tanky, I would say, especially compared to Des Moines, even though the outer armor looks pretty similar. The Citadel has a bunch of spaced armor. It's actually a very skinny Citadel, and it makes it just so much more tanky compared to a Des Moines. Des Moines is going to take a lot more Citadel damage, where this ship just seems to get away with being a little bit too broadside more often than not. Um, so as you can see, we're... Yeah, we're getting pushed off the map right now. <laughs> we're trying to focus on different battleships, though. Once I have a fire on a battleship that I know is permanent, if I have the opportunity to move on to another one, I will. I want to pop as many damage controls as I can and get as much fire damage ticking as possible, since that's going to distribute out damage in the hopes that I'll be able to finish them off or my team will be able to finish off some of these battleships as they get lower and lower HP. We got a Witherer already, and uh, the HE damage really is pretty spectacular in the Annapolis. It's pretty insane what adding just a whole nother turret does to a Des Moines here. And of course, we all know how powerful Des Moines and Annapolis armor piercing is. But you'll notice I'm really not using my burst fire. And I tend to never use it in the Annapolis, unless I'm about to go behind an island, someone else that I'm really needing to focus on the enemy team is going behind an island, or let's say a destroyer is about to exit my radar range or my radar is about to run out for that little bit of extra damage. Other than that, I think the burst fire on the Annapolis is just kind of bait, honestly. The downside of the extremely long reload is just generally not worth it. Oftentimes when I see other Annapolis players in the server and they use their burst fire on me, I often look at it as they're a non-factor for the next 30 seconds or so. That's not what you really want out of a cruiser that is there to provide DPM. The Kremlin finally does go down, which feels pretty good, but they're about to quad cap us and we're on 91 points as a team and there's four of us left. <laughs> yeah, this is not looking so good. However, we are in an Annapolis and there's some pretty low HP ships. Hopefully we will finish off the Ruprecht with this salvo, finally. Not sure how that first salvo only did uh, shatters and bounces against that guy's broadside. But that's okay. We'll take him out. We'll take this next guy out, hopefully. Unfortunately, we do lose our Harugamo in the process. But we've kind of pulled it back-ish. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can exactly say this is close, but at least we're above 100 points as a team. Um, there's still a full HP Illinois. That is going to be pretty terrifying to deal with as an Annapolis since... He's got worse DPM than us, but got a lot of HP. It's some pretty decent armor if we get into just a straight DPM fight. The Des Moines guns can definitely be pretty scary. 190k approaching 200k feels pretty good here. We do have to be careful of the destroyer YOLOing us though. That's one of the reasons I had Hydro up a little bit earlier on. And then we pop our radar just to make sure we're not getting yellowed right now. There's our Confederate buff, which Pretty perfect timing is <laughs> here to help us deal with the Holland, who I guess just assumed they were winning the game and just pushed into radar and didn't care. And Confederate Halsey and Annapolis means destroyers die very, very quickly. 6,000 damage. <laughs> Sub four second reload too, by the way. Pretty nuts, so we're able to swap over to the Yamagiri here. And I do see the Kitakaze. Propulsion mod is a great skill to take on Annapolis since you're a little bit slow to get going and when you're maneuvering around islands like this, 
it's very handy to be able to accelerate very quickly to maneuver yourself around these islands. Somehow we get a close quarters expert on the Kitakaze, not with our main guns, and we will dodge the torpedoes. But we're certainly not out of danger yet, since there is a near full HP Illinois here, really ready to meet us. And, well, since he has Des Moines guns and he's using the armor piercing, I can't use all of my turrets. That is something that you gotta know about playing against an Annapolis, a Des Moines, a Salem. Anything with these guns, the instant you use your rear turrets, they're able to citadel you. That's just kind of how it goes in these cruiser v cruiser fights. This guy actually seems to know what he's doing since he's actually shooting armor piercing at my turrets and successfully taking them out. It's kind of the unfortunate side of these bow on Des Moines versus Des Moines fights, or at least when you have the same guns. Um, yeah, it tends to be a <laughs> who can kill each other's turrets quicker. He gets both of ours in that actually last salvo there. Fortunately though, he's not quite able to get the citadels in on us as we go broadsides. And then we have a whole two other turrets in the rear. That's going to be more than enough to take this guy out. We lost a lot of HP in the process, but uh, 8,000 into his stern like that? Yeah, the improved pen angles means... Stern in is not going to be enough to angle to these guns. That is a real big weak point on a lot of cruisers and battleships. If you can get behind them as a Des Moines or Annapolis, just aim for their stern. It's going to be pretty much guaranteed full pens. Um, a lot of sterns are pretty flat or reasonably rounded, which this improved pen angles will just absolutely crush. So there we go. Kraken unleashed and we're still losing by a ton. Fortunately, this Monty's a little distracted, and our AA is not really enough to deal with this super carrier, but we will stay alive long enough to take out the Montana and collect our sixth kill. We have our piercing pretty ridiculous into the upper belt of battleships as well. So now we've pulled back a 4v10 into a 2v3 somehow, with the power of Annapolis is pretty ridiculous here. 330-ish thousand damage that quickly is pretty insane. I think you can see exactly why I enjoy playing this ship. Unfortunately for us, the rest of the enemy team is going to be very difficult to take out. The Yamagiri playing it smart on just the edge of our radar range, so he's able to escape it relatively quickly. This is the one time that I would use the burst fire, and we do. We have to get very lucky though if we want to bring this game back. We have to hope for like a detonation, or I hit every single shell. And we don't. We hit a decent amount, but weren't quite able to take out the DD. And we have to stay in the caps if we want the uh, game to last any sort of time. And unfortunately, that means we do lose a 340k 6-kill match. Yeah, a little disappointing, but we tried our best and actually nearly brought it back. I was pretty happy with the way the Annapolis uh, was able to perform there. Taking a blowout into a somewhat close match. Maybe not on points, but at least on kills. So we do end the game there, unfortunately, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. Tons of awards in that one, <laughs> almost collecting everything. Even an AA award, that's kind of surprising, but 2.5k base XP on a loss, nearly 2.6. That is kind of ridiculous, actually. As for the build that I like to run on the Annapolis, it's a pretty jack of all trades build, honestly. Concealment Expert, Superintendent, and Adrenaline Rush are all pretty standard. Even running Top Grade Gunner, I find that as I'm playing these islands close to cap zones, I can sometimes activate the 8% DPM buff, and there's not really anything else that I would be that interested in taking for the extra 4 points. You can see I have so many points left over, I'm actually taking the two AA upgrades. Especially if I'm playing on islands, this definitely helps. At least if I'm playing against Tier 10 carriers, I find that these two AA skills can be enough to deter a tier 10 carrier from dropping me on islands. Uh, super carrier is a bit of a different story, but a lot of the times against tier 10 carriers, I am confident enough to play on those islands, and even against super carriers, I can sometimes risk it. Gun feeder, of course, is just excellent here, especially with Halsey getting that extra fast swap time on a ship that wants to use both ammo types because it's just so good. Grease the gears would be awesome here, but uh, I just haven't fitted in on this build, but I typically do enjoy taking Grease the gears. But the reason I think I can get away with that is uh, I'm actually taking range mods. We don't actually lose that turret traverse. 
that we otherwise would when we're taking reload mod. Uh, so if you're taking reload mod, you probably want to maximize your turret traverse as much as you can. For me, I like the range mod flexibility, especially in these high tier games where things tend to be pretty passive, especially at the start of games. I want to be at least able to impact the battle. Concealment expert, of course. Propulsion, pretty awesome when you're camping on islands, that kind of thing. It's very, very useful. Aiming systems, since Des Moines turrets, Annapolis guns, of course, can be a little wonky at times. So we want to uh, make sure that we're hitting as many shells as we possibly can. Just quickly for the armor, if you haven't seen it, it is basically Des Moines armor with a little bit more on the uh, armor belt here. But the secret sauce is this. Yes, that is the Citadel. <laughs> Pretty skinny, especially at the uh, front here. And really what this means is that there's a whole entire gap between your armor belt and the Citadel. Sure, it's only 15 millimeters and you would think that wouldn't really do much, but for whatever reason, spaced armor in this game tends to just eat shells and they just do zero damage. That's why French cruisers and battleships can be pretty tanky at times where otherwise you would think you're gonna do massive damage to them. Spaced armor is a little bit busted in this game. I don't know if that's by design or bugs, <laughs> but either way, it certainly helps the Annapolis a ton. So there you have it, a pretty unfortunate loss, but that tends to be the way that you get the most damage and impactful games at the end there. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.